begin as we begin all things in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And happy Easter to everyone. Happy Easter. As we enter into these sacred mysteries on this most holy of days, we unite with Christian communities all over the world to celebrate Christ's resurrection. Here in our parish, we gather at home to celebrate in communion with one another. The Paschal candle burns brightly in our midst, proclaiming the power of darkness and death hath no more power. Christ is truly risen. Christ has come again. And so let us prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries. Risen Lord, the Anointed One of God, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Risen Lord, the Paschal Lamb sacrificed for us. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. And risen Lord, the cornerstone of God's kingdom, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. He went 
My sisters and brothers, this is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On that first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we do not know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cross there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter arrived after him. He went into the tomb and saw the burial cloth there, and the cloth that covered his head, not with the burial cloth, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture, that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On this great Easter morning, what we get to do is celebrate the victory of Christ over death. And what I mean by that is we celebrate this every time. But really what the Paschal candle that burns brightly demonstrates for us is that each and every year, no matter what we do and no matter how we behave, whether we misbehave or we're great, we're going to go through this Holy Tritium and this holy time of the year where Christ suffers his passion. And then today we get to celebrate when Christ celebrates his resurrection. And I think that's important for us because it gives us hope that no matter what is going on in the world, things are always going to be better and God's victory is always going to be complete. And so we have this wonderful reading from the Gospel of John, and John does it very differently than the Synoptic Gospels. In the Synoptic Gospels, in the morning, Mary Magdalene goes with other women to the tomb, but here, John has her going by herself. But even there, there's some plurality where they say, she says, we do not know where they have taken him. But she goes to the tomb first, and she's disturbed because it's empty. She doesn't go in, she doesn't do that. Jesus is going to appear to her later in the garden, and we all know that later in the chapter. And yet here, she gets fearful, and so she runs and she tells Simon Peter, the leader of the rest of the disciples. And Simon Peter, in his older age, in his wise age, he also then runs to the tomb to find out what the heck is going on. And the disciple with whom Jesus loved runs with him. And him being a little bit younger, we were introduced to him at, obviously, the Last Supper, and then again at the foot of the cross. But he runs and he gets there faster. And I think that's a metaphor for a lot of us because we do things quickly and honestly and openly, and yet we don't quite have the faith to step into that empty tomb and see what is there. But Simon Peter gets there and he goes in and he sees that the burial cloths are laid differently and they're not just ripped and thrown apart and the ones covering the head are rolled up to the side. And that shows a couple things for us. One, it shows that Jesus' body is not stolen. It doesn't just disappear, but rather he is truly risen from the dead. And I think, again, for most of us, that gives us great hope because we just went through this period of Lent and this period of the Holy Triduum and of the Passion of Christ. And now we're going to say, okay, now we get to start anew. There's new lists of life. And in the days ahead and the week ahead, we're going to see that played out in the readings and also in our own lives. Most of us right now are a little bit bewildered and befuddled, just like those disciples were. We're a little bit scared, and we don't really know what's going on with this whole coronavirus and the stay-at-home orders and all these things. How are we going to pay our bills? How are we going to do this? What are we going to do? Where is God in all of this? And this is the reality. God is in our hearts, and God is in our lives, here and now, at all times. And no matter how much we fear, no matter how much we're scared, God's victory over death is always going to be complete. And Christ is always going to rise and bring that newness to life. And that is what we hope for as a Christian people. That is what we get to believe in, is that we have a God who loves us so much, he dies for us on the cross. And today we celebrate the simple reality 
that he has conquered death and has risen from the dead. And that gives us all hope for a better tomorrow as this newness of life starts once again. place of the creed today we need to renew our baptismal promises so I'd invite those here present and all at home to respond in the affirmative. My sisters and brothers through our participation in Christ's passion, death, and resurrection we have been buried with him in baptism and so we may live with him risen to newness of life. And so now that our Lent observances has concluded let us renew the promises made in holy baptism. And so I ask you do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. I do. And may Almighty God, our Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of sins, keep us by his grace, in Jesus Christ our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. Amen. And now we're supposed to do the sprinkling rites. And I'm not supposed to use holy water to sprinkle on everyone, just like we've emptied all the pots of the church. And so, I'll do it from here. I invite Sister Edith forward again. My brothers and sisters, believing in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we also believe in our own. Since Christ experienced all that we experience, including death, with confidence and trust, let us bring our prayer before the one who sent the Christ to save us. For all of God's people brought through the saving waters of baptism to a land of promise, may we proclaim with our lips and our lives the good news of Christ's victory over sin and death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. During this worldwide health crisis, we remember all who are ill with coronavirus and the medical personnel who care for them. May our prayers support them and may their lives be preserved. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. On this feast of the resurrection, we pray for all the peoples of the earth. May this time of trial help all people to see how interconnected we are, how dependent upon each other we are. In the light of the risen Christ, may we come to see that we are all brothers and sisters. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
together we celebrate the resurrection of Christ through death he trampled down death and in whose tombs he has bestowed life although we are physically apart we ask the spirit of life to join us together in prayer in faith in hope and in love amen amen now I invite you to prepare for the altar Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread and wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. These will come for us, the bread and drink of everlasting life. Blessed be God And pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father of the Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exalted with pastoral gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wonderfully reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed death, by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Son, 
his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. As we look forward to his second coming, we offer with thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim who is by death and will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son be filled with the Holy Spirit and become one body and spirit in Christ. May he make of us the eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, the martyrs, St. Ignatius of Loyola, and all the saints in whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Austin Anthony, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. <coughs> Almost. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed sisters and brothers, and to all who are pleasing to you with their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, where we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow upon the world all that is good. And through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
My brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Together let us pray the prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are most present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive this moment, receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never let me be permitted to be separated from you. Amen. And let us pray. God of love and compassion, watch over your people, and through the power of your Spirit and our imitation of your Son, bring us to the glory of the resurrection promised by this Easter sacrament. And we ask this in the name of Jesus, the risen one. Amen. Amen. Now, I know you're watching at home, but to show that this is a valid Roman Catholic Mass, we do have announcements. Usually on Palm Sunday last week is when we would collect uh, the bowls for Operation Rice Bowl, which is the main fundraiser for Catholic Relief Services. So we're going to ask you to please continue to do your rice bowl, um, and then when we start Masses up again after the suspension has been lifted by the Bishop, we will collect all those and send them in to Catholic Relief Services. 75% uh, of the money raised goes to those less fortunate, usually in the third world, and so it's important to continue to support them. And then 25% of the money raised stays here in our local diocese. Also, during this time when we haven't had masses, we have these nice little envelopes for those of you that are registered. So please continue to fill out your envelopes and send them to your parish offices at your local house of worship. It's still, we still have bills to pay just like everyone else. And so thank you in advance for your generosity. If for some reason your parish does not have an online, an online giving option, or you do not have envelopes, you can always go to the St. Ignatius Mission.org website. We'll be happy to take your donation. And I invite you to bow your head and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity, and it is to pass to defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. And now that the days of the Lord's passion have dawned to a close, may you celebrate them with gladness, the Paschal Feast, come with Christ's help, and exulting in spirit to all those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the one who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, descend upon us and remain with us forever. Amen. This Easter celebration is ended. Let us go in peace to practice the gospel message and celebrate the Paschal Feast. Amen. Amen.